A very good morning to every one of you. Uh, thank you, AOC, for giving me this opportunity to present here. So I'll be speaking on use of Okta or OCT angio in uh, glaucoma. So what is Okta? It's a non-invasive imaging procedure. It has a, a scan acquisition time of five to six seconds, and it has a high repeatability, high reproducibility, and it is dry free. Uh, these are the Okta machines. All uh, the companies have their own uh, version of Okta. Zeiss have Angioplex, Optoview have Angioview, Topcon have Maestro 2, Heidelberg have their own OCD Angio module. So how they uh, actually image the, uh, uh, how, how Okta works, uh, Okta uses a, a low coherence laser light reflectance and it uh, actually uh, images the uh, blood cells, moving blood cells in the uh, vessels. That's how it uh, depicts the blood vessels in the uh, retina. So how, what it does, they have, uh, they take uh, fast axial scans uh, in the same location and then slowly they take uh, images in the same location. So that gives a on, on fast image like the, uh, in the uh, left side. Uh, what all uh, data the uh, Okta gives, they give the vascular density in and around the optic nerve and the flow index of the optic nerve the vascular uh, in density in the peripapillary retina and the vascular density in the macula. So the main significance in the glaucoma is uh, the blood flow, the capillary diameter and papillary uh, vessel, uh, the vascular density around the optic nerve. How they uh, give this uh, data, these are all play of the softwares. They are, all the machines have their own softwares, be it SSADA, which is known as split spectrum amplitude decorrelation angiography, which is there in AngioView or OMAG, uh, the OCT based microangiography, it's in Zeiss Angioplex, or OCT ratio analysis, which is there in Topcon. So uh, the uh, a, a spectral domain OCT, along with this uh, uh, softwares, they give this uh, uh, different uh, values, the flow index and uh, the uh, vascular density. There are mainly two slabs of Okta. One is the RPC slab or the superficial slab. Uh, and one is the choroidal slab or the deeper slab. We are more focused on the uh, uh, superficial slab for the glaucoma uh, analysis. This is a picture of angioplex. Uh, it gives a, a p-value and the flux index. Uh, the p-value is the uh, vascular density in uh, each quadrant. So this is a healthy disc and there is a mark reduction in the uh, left side, uh, in the glaucomatous disc. The two uh, main entity which they give is one flow index or, and uh, another is vascular density. Flow index we generally don't use much in uh, glaucoma because the reproducibility is poor and uh, there is changes in the physiological stress or, state or stress also. If one person goes for a running and comes back and then take a OCT angio, the flow index will be uh, much more increased. So the variability is much more higher. The vascular density is much more uh, uh, specific for glaucoma. It's a percentage of area occupied by the vascular pixels in the on uh, angiogram. The reproducibility is better and it is used for uh, uh, the uh, diagnosis and monitoring. There are uh, lots of uh, uh, studies uh, published in uh, OCT angiography since 2014 or 15. Uh, I'll go through some of the studies, how it is uh, giving idea about the glaucoma. Uh, so this study by Wang et al, it has shown we are from uh, normal to severe glaucoma. It has a, a significant uh, decrease in uh, vascular density uh, along the disease progression. If there is any uh, pro uh, uh, correlation between the uh, visual field and OCT angiography, this uh, paper by Yar Mohammadi et al. has shown that uh, it actually corresponds with the uh, visual field defect. Uh, the more severe the glaucoma, the less uh, number of uh, the vascular density uh, reduces. Whether there is any uh, uh, correlation with the OCT also, it, uh, this paper by Gaiman et al. has shown that OCT angio and OCT uh, uh, pictures and our uh, visual field, they work hand in hand and uh, uh, the OCT angiography, um, the severe uh, vascular density loss uh, is corresponded with the uh, RNFL thickness loss and uh, uh, marked visual uh, field uh, defect. 
whether it has any role in pre-perimetric glaucoma, we are more interested in the pre-perimetric glaucoma with this imaging modalities. Uh, this paper by uh, uh, Kenemao uh, et al. have shown that uh, in a 61-year-old patient where the uh, disc is uh, around 0.7 uh, IR less than SR, uh, in that case, uh, the HVF is absolutely normal, but uh, the OCT angio is picking up, the uh, vascular density has come down. Uh, the, uh, in the uh, OCT angiography, the pedipapillary, uh, uh, the OCT, um, the ONH is taken 4 into four, 5 uh, uh, box, uh, but in macula it is taken in the 6 into 6 box because the damage is in the pedipheral uh, retina, the RNFL. That's why uh, the macula program is always 6 into 6 uh, cube. Uh, and uh, it, this study by Mohogimi have shown that uh, macular and uh, ONH vessel density both have a uh, relation with the advancement of uh, uh, glaucoma. Uh, and uh, this uh, study also by Shoji et al. has shown that uh, macular vessel density also has a low role in uh, diagnosing the primary open angle glaucoma. This is the first uh, one to pick up the uh, loss of uh, uh, reduced vascular density. This study by Choi et al. has shown with each clock hour measurement uh, in uh, pedipalpary th RNFL thickness, there is a significant uh, decrease from the normal population as well as in the macular GCPIL also and everything is uh, p-value uh, less than 0 0.001 which is pretty significant. Uh, so the uh, glaucoma can be diagnosed with, uh, early glaucoma can be diagnosed with the OCT angio module. Uh, this uh, study, but we have spoken about, spoken about the uh, uh, superficial vessels, but uh, there is a role in uh, deeper uh, vessel architecture also the, in the choroidal uh, microvascular dropout. Uh, shows if there is a dropout in uh, choroidal microvasculature, there is a rapid central visual uh, field progression. This study is shown by uh, Zoe et al. Some uh, persons are actually not uh, very uh, 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 comfortable with uh, doing with HFA or uh, uh, automated perimetry. In those cases, what we can do, uh, do is uh, through the octa, it can give an overlay of the HVF progression uh, and uh, which gives a AI module uh, uh, HVF uh, of that uh, patient and we can use it for uh, glaucoma progression also. There is no uh, uh, model for uh, glaucoma progression through uh, to notice glaucoma progression in octa that's a limitation for uh, octa uses and it me actually measures the volume uh, uh, velocity of the rbc cells so there are so many of artifacts there are line artifacts in there that is a limitation for octa and uh, there is always a chicken and egg the theory whether the structural damage is first or the vascular loss is first, that's a debatable question. So that is the limitation for Okta. Thank you. Thank you, Basu, uh, for nice um, presentation on uh, Okta. So how do you place an Okta on, over the OCT? Like there are certain places where you can place it above OCT. Yeah. Uh, in uh, um, certain situations like where the vascular factor comes into my mind like uh, NTG or uh, some glaucoma where it is progressing even with uh, uh, controlled IOP in target IOP in those cases we can place octa but always there is a uh, debate about that chicken and egg theory which comes first whether the structural damage comes first or the vascular dropout comes first that is a debatable question so still more study is required. Uh, we have to gather the information more, so we have to do more octa to come to a uh, definite conclusion. Thank you. Panelists want to comment anything on this? Currently, the role plays in the detection of early glaucoma. Probably uh, that is where I think octa stands now. Uh, so definitely like uh, for uh, because now more and more early detection is given more importance so before the functional damage starts the octa is showing that it can pick up an early damage so I will put it in that category wherein we need so to detect for that, for that we have been already using an OCT that is what I am yeah. asking so that in early glaucoma if we are using OCT as it is, then what is the role of Octa? That's what I asked. Huh. So that's what I said. Even like Octa is also placing role. Probably there are some parameters which can be picked up in Octa in compared when compared to OCT much earlier. So 
that means we can detect glaucoma even earlier than, than OCT changes. Yeah, yeah. But then that do is, we treat still, that patients? That also yeah, is a question. That, that is also a question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you.